Hey guys, and welcome to a new video in this computer vision tutorial. In this video here, we're going to do a comparison of OpenCV with C++ versus Python. We're going to compare some of the different kind of algorithms that we can run and see how it performs in both C++ and Python. We're going to talk about like what are the differences when should we use C++ and when should we use Python. But first of all, when we join the Discord server, I'll link to it down in the description here. Come so join the channel, chat us about computer vision, deep learning, AI, and so on. You can also become a member of the channel if you want to support the channel with a small monthly fee. Everything will go to create more and better quality content here on the channel. Also, if you have some problems in your own projects or applications, you can become a member too and I can help you out, give you some guidance and so on if you're a member of the channel. So thank you guys. So here we're just going to jump straight into the code and we're actually like both going to do the exact same code in C++ and Python. Then we're going to test out a, di a, a different kind of like algorithms. We're going to test out like face detection with hard cascade classifiers. We're going to do some for loops where we're using for loops in both C++ and Python. So we can actually compare the speed when we're using our own, uh, our own like for loops and so on in Python and C++. We're also going to have a, a background attraction. So we're going to subtract the background test out some different kind of algorithm, do some image operations and compare the speed and performance in C++ and Python. We're going to see some differences uh, if we're just using like pure OpenCV functions or like for example NumPy functions. It is actually just a wrapper for the C++ API when we're calling the functions in Python. So the code should actually like or like the performance and speed of the algorithms that we're running both in Python and C++. If we're only using like the Python or like the OpenCV functions we should get the exact same speed and performance in both of the programming languages. The difference comes when we actually like want to use our own code and write our own Python code. If you want to, for example, have a for loop running some other different kind of algorithms, or we want to do some uh, for loops with image operations ourselves, then we can see that the performance will decrease a lot when we're using it in Python compared to C++ because Python is an interpreted language where C++ we can compile it and then we can run it afterwards. If you're going to do Python uh, or like C++ comparison test by yourself, I'm going to upload this video here or like this code here in this video to my GitHub. You can just download it and run it yourself. Just make sure that when, I, when we're actually comparing Python to C++, we need to make sure that we're running like um, the, our C++ version of OpenCV in release mode. If you're running it in debug mode, it will do some other different kind of stuff under the hood and we will not get the same performance and we won't be able to compare C++ and Python. So make sure that we're using the release mode when we're actually like going to build a program um, and run it here in C++. But first of all here, we jump into the C++ code. We're just going to set up the face, face detection stuff. So we just have our image we take in, we convert it to a grayscale image. Then we're just going to detect all the faces here that we have in our image with this hard cascade classifier that we pass it in. Um, again, you can just download it on my GitHub. You will set everything up. You can just run these uh, scripts here and the code. So here we're just going to have a full loop running through it and then we're just actually like getting the center here of the faces. We're drawing ellipses around it and so on. So these are just the basic image operations that we do when we're doing face detection. Then we're also going to create a function here that just have a, a nested for loop. So we just have two for loops here where we can just pass in the number of times that we actually like want to run through uh, both these for loops here. So it will be a nested for loop. This is just to show you the performance, what happens when we're actually using for loops in C++. Uh, compared to Python, for example. So it could be a for loop where we have our image here instead of just taking the sum. We could have an image here where we're doing operations, we're iterating through the whole image, and then we do operations on that, or like take some of the values and do something with that too. So this is just to show you the performance or like difference in performance when we're going to run our own code and like implement our own code and algorithms in Python uh, when we compare to C++ because if we just do it in C++, we can just create all the image operations and the algorithms that we want uh, that we want to, and, and it will still run really fast because we're compiling our uh, C++ code, and then we can just run it, um, run our executable file. So down here, we just have our main loop. We're also going to do background subtraction. Then we take in a number of frames. So here we can just specify the number of frames that we want to take into account. We just open our webcam here. So right now we're not going to display the image because that will take up some processing time and processing power to actually like open up and display the uh, the image or like the frame as well. So we're going to do all of it in the terminal so we can just output uh, output the result in the terminal and then we can compare it from C++ uh, to Python later on just to get the exact same test for both C++ and Python so we don't have like that many variables or variances from each test. 
So here we're just going to start a timer, then we have a full loop just running through the number of frames. We're just going to read in an image from our capture, and then we're going to do that number of frames times. Then first of all here, we're just going to apply background traction. We're going to do some post-processing of our on our background traction. So we're actually going to do this um, erosion and dilation. Right now, we're just going to run it on five iterations. So we're going to run this five times. In practice, you won't, you won't really need to run this five times. You will maybe have one or two iterations, but just to show the performance and have a bit more like computational heavy tasks to do here when we're actually testing these algorithms. Then afterwards, we're going to test the face detection. So we're just going to comment that out. It will run the face detection. And then we can also test the follow up here. We can try to like uncomment all of it and then run both the face detection, background traction, and also run a follow loop with different amounts of like number of iterations that we want to have in our nested follow loop. Then after we've been through all the images that we want, then we're just going to end the timer and then we can just print out the, the time it took to actually like run this algorithm through on the end a number of frames. And then we can also estimate the number of frames per second will just be the number of frames that we actually like ran through. And we just divide that by the number of seconds that it took to run the whole algorithm through or like do the algorithms on this, uh, these number of frames that we have in our full loop. Then again, we're just going to destroy the windows and our program will just terminate. So this is the exact same thing that we're going to do in Python as we have here. We have our background traction, we have our face detection, and then we just have the exact same functions. We're just calling the OpenCV functions. We're using the OpenCV functions to convert colors, detect the faces with hard cascades, also the background traction, everything is either in NumPy or C++ so we can actually like, or like in, in OpenCV so we can compare it one to one and we won't have any differences from one program to the other. Um, so we can just directly compare the results that we get out here in the terminal from C++ to Python. So right now I'm just going to run through a couple of examples. We're going to both do background traction, face detections, number of fall loops, then we're actually going to uh, just take some different number of frames. Uh, and also run the for loop through um, like maybe 1000 times and then you'll see that we can't even run it in, in Python anymore. If you have that many operations, it will just take up too much computational time uh, to run these like two nested for loops together. So here, first of all, we're just going to run the program. First of all, we're just doing background extraction. I'll just run the program here so we can see the output. So here, first of all, we're capturing 30 frames. It took around two seconds to actually like capture these 30 frames and then do all the algorithms on the 30 frames. And then we also just estimate the frames per second here. So when we have this background subtraction with um, iterations here, we actually like need to do five because we had that in the C++ version. So I'm just going to run it through here again. We're capturing 30 frames. It took a, a bit under two seconds here. And then we have 15 frames per second uh, in this example. So now we're going to do the exact same thing in C++, we have two seconds and then we have 15 frames per second um, as average here. So we're going to C++, we make sure that we're in release mode. So we need to choose release mode. And then we can just go down here, build our program or like build our files and then we can just run them afterwards. So now we're building our program here with CMake. If you don't know how to set up C++ with OpenCV, um, here in Visual Studio Code. I have videos about that and on the channel. We're just using CMake, so you'll just have a CMake configuration file. You can find all of it on my GitHub and also in the videos on how to set these things up here and run the code in C++ with OMCV. So here we see that our build has finished with exit code zero. So now we can actually just go down here and launch or like run our program. So here we're building and then we can see here that we're just capturing 30 frames. It took two seconds and we got like 14.8 second or like frames per second here that were estimated. So we see the result here is just exactly the same as in Python. We have around 15 frames per second and it took two seconds to actually like use, uh, do these things. The reason for this is that when we're using Python, it's just a wrapper for the C++ code that we're running here. So as long as we're only using functions from, uh, from OpenCV, we can just choose whatever language we want. If we want to use OpenCV, or like C++ or Python. So if you just want to set up some program fast, you know you'll only use um, OpenCV functions, just go with Python, set it up quickly. You don't need to, to take into account like data types, you don't need to compile your program and so on. So here we're just going to do face detection too. So now we just comment in face detection. Again, we'll just go down, build our program. So we're building the program. And here after that, we can just run it again. 
So now we're both doing background attraction and face detections in C++. Again, circling around two seconds, uh, 15 seconds down here at the bottom. So right now we're not displaying anything here because we don't want to open up the, the frame and it will take out some processing time as well. Then we go into Python, do the exact same thing. We're just going to go down here into like the main function. Uh, so we have the face detection. We're just going to uncomment that. And then we can just run our program here and see if we get the same results as in C++. So here again, 2.10 here, uh, 14.3. If we just go in here again, we can see that we get almost the exact same number of uh, estimated frames per second and also the time taken to do these algorithms. So again, C++ and Python, they're just one to one as long as we're using the functions or like the functions and methods from OpenCV. The last thing here that we're going to do before we're going to, to play around with the number of frames is just we want to apply this nested for loop with a number of, of iterations. We can just start with, for example, 100 iterations. So we need we have one for loop running through 100 iterations, and then we have a nested for loop inside of that running for 100 uh, iterations too. So it will be 100 times 100. Again, we're just going to build our program. And while it's building, we're just going to go into Python and do the exact same thing. We're choosing 100. We go back to C++. And now we have built our code, and then we can just run it here at the bottom. Here, we're capturing 30 frames. And it will just run all these things here through. We can see that it doesn't impact it doesn't impact the code at all with running these two for loops here in C++. But if we're going to Python, for example, we run a program here again with the two nested for loops. We're just capturing 30 frames. And now here we get out with that it actually took it took longer here because we're now using the for loop. We're down at, at around 14 frames per second and it took like 2.12 where if we go back to C++, it took only like a 2.6 and 14.5 uh, estimated frames per second. So we just if, if we just keep increasing this number here, and if we actually like have an image where we're iterating through the whole image, we will have a lot of iterations. And if we're doing that multiple times, uh, it will just take up a lot of, of processing power. And this is the difference between using C++ and Python when we're actually like doing image operations ourselves or implementing our own algorithms. So now we're going to run with 1000 here. We're going to build our program and then we're just going to run it afterwards. We're running the code. Now we're capturing 30 frames. And here we can see that it's, it's still at, at 1000 iterations in, in a nested for loop. It doesn't affect the frames per second uh, or like the algorithms or the computational cost here at all. If we're going to Python, again, we apply 1000 iterations here in a nested for loop. We run our program, capture 30 frames. Here we can see that now we're down to nine frame frames per second. And here in C++, we act like still have 14.6. It doesn't affect the program at all with having this, with having this for loop here running 1000 iterations in a nested for loop. And here we can just see that the, the performance and the speed in Python just increases the more iterations here we have in our for loop. We can see it took 3.3 seconds, nine frames per second. So we're actually like losing up to five, five and a half frame, uh, frame per second when we are running this for loop here in Python. If we're going to go with 10,000, we might actually like craft the program here um, in Python uh, because it is not able to run it, or at least it will take a long time before it's actually like able to run it. Here we can see it's just capturing 30 frames. Now it has been more than three seconds. It should actually like take a lot longer, but now we can just see the program has actually crashed. We won't be able to use this in any application um, when we're actually like doing this and this default loop with 10,000 iterations. If we just, while it's just running here in Python, we can just go in here and try it in C++ and see if we're actually like able to do it in C++ faster and also how fast are we actually like able to still run this for loop here. So we're just building a program, running it here for the last time. We can try to play around with number of uh, frames too and see if that has some perform, uh, performance change the differences, but it shouldn't have. So now we're just running the program. We're capturing 30 frames. Oops, here we can see that, oh, because we have already opened it in Python, then we can open up the webcam in C++. So while not right now, we're just going to terminate the session here in Python. We go back to C++. We just build it again here to make sure, and then we're just going to run the program. So here we're capturing 30 frames. 
again it has no impact we're, we're running a follow with 10,000 iterations in a nested for loop and we still see that it has no impact on on um, on this algorithm here or like how long it takes the speed and performance is not decreased by by having our own for loops doing our own image operations and so on where if we use it in python it just crashes the program we, we won't even be able to run this program here or at least it will take a long long time to be able to do it if we just go back to 100 here again we go back to 100 here in c++ as well then we can try to change it around here so maybe we should go for like 10 frames and see if 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 you'll just take a small number of frames does it actually like impact and how can we compare uh, ohms v from c++ to python so here we're just going to build a program and then we're going to run it so this is the last test that we're going to do before we're going to sum up what differences act like are we can see here we're capturing 10 frames uh, and now we got 1.3 seconds we get around 7 frames per second so we actually get lower frames per second because we're only taking in uh, 10 frames so the more frames we actually like, take into account uh, the timer will be different uh, different too so if we're going to do the exact same thing we're going to do it with 10 number of frames in Python and we're going to run our program capturing 10 frames and then we can see here that we get around the same performance 1.5 seconds and around a bit lower than 7 frames per second here in, in Python we can try to go with 100 as well, just run it here in Python, go back to see what flaws change it here as well before we're going to wrap up on this video. And then we'll just go back here again, go down to the bottom, we're capturing 100 frames, we get around 22 frames per second here. So actually like when we're, the more frames we're running per second, like the better estimate do we get of the frames per second because we just have more samples that we can actually take the average off. We see 4.5 seconds, 22 frames per second, if we're going here and do the exact same thing in C++. So the last thing here, building our program, running our program in release mode, we're capturing 100 frames. And here we should get the results here in a bit, 4.5 seconds and around 22, 23 frames per second um, estimated. So again, we, get, we now get the same performance. Our C++ is still a bit faster because we still have this nested for loop with 100 iterations. So it's still a bit faster, but we can now compare it one to one again. If we're losing, if we're losing, or like if we're deleting this follow-up here in both programs again, we can just build it, run it, and we should get the exact same performance again. And it doesn't matter if you're using 10 frames, 30 frames, 100 frames, 1,000 frames, or we just have a live video webcam stream uh, that we are running. We're getting the exact same results if we're only using the Ohm's V functions. So again. 23 frames per second if you're going to C++ comment out the for loop or like into Python comment out the for loop run a program here for the last time capturing 100 frames around 22.5 frames per second so thank you guys for watching this video here we had this in-depth comparison of uh, C++ versus Python when we're using OpenCV we compare some different kind of algorithms. Some of them were computational heavy. We tried with some different kind of for loops, number of frames per second that we went through. And to sum it up, we can actually just say that as long as we're only using functions where they are implemented as a wrapper uh, to C++ code, and we're only using NumPy, OMCV, and all these other different kind of libraries and frameworks, it doesn't matter if you're using Python or uh, C++, but if you have your own projects and applications where you want to implement your own algorithms or do specific operations where you want to use for loops running through a, 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 like a lot of iterations on your images or like some other different kind of algorithms that you want to do, you should definitely choose C++ over, uh, over Python if you still want to have the same performance and speed. So again, thanks for watching. Remember hit the subscribe button under the video here. And also hit the bell notification so we get a notification when I upload a new video. And like the video if you like the content and you want more in the future. It just really helps me and the YouTube channel out in a massive way. I'm currently also doing this computer vision tutorial where we're talking about like basic image operations. How we can calibrate cameras, use stereo vision to get depth information in the image. How we can create point clouds, do different kind of point clouds uh, operations, post estimation and so on. So if you're interested in that tutorial, I'll link to it up here. Or else I'll see you next week guys. Bye for now.